Hello everyone, my name is Larseth, and welcome to our new, well, a new series, The Long Dark. So this is a completely different type of game to which I, I guess I normally play, uh, which is, well, obviously European Universalis 4 is primarily the game which is, well, by far the biggest game that's on the channel. And then there is World of Warcraft, um, which I've just started doing a few videos on. Um, Long Dark, obviously completely, completely different type of game. It's not grand strategy, or I guess strategy, but in a different sort of sense. Survival game. Um, and I absolutely love this game. It's bloody brilliant. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's basically a survival game set in the sort of Canadian wilderness, essentially. And it is very, very, uh, <laughs> quite brutal. Um, it's very sort of realistic. It's sort of, I guess meant to emulate what it would actually be like you know there's none of this you know you go up and um punch a rock and you get some stuff that you can smelt down and make all sorts of bits and pieces um there's none of this building grand building stuff it's literally you know you survive and you will run out eventually and you will die like you could be doing absolutely amazingly in this game and then walk out in a blizzard one night and find <laughs> well not walk out in a blizzard but you'll be going out in the day you know hunky dory and then it might there might be a blizzard and it might kill you which is great um <laughs> so it's it's quite unforgiving i am nowhere near as good as uh, this as some people are some people are insanely good at this so the longest i've survived i think is 30 days and the only reason i didn't continue get past that i didn't die um I just essentially got bored um, purely because I had so much food on me um, that, you know, I was pretty much set for a good long time. So it was essentially just a case of, you know, resting, then restart, then, you know, just sleeping the whole time until I was running low on food. In this uh, series, we're going to play on the Voyager um, setting. Pilgrim, far too easy. Voyager is essentially normal. Stalker, I guess hard. And Interloper, which is, I think is a new one which came in the last patch, is just basically obscenely hard. <laughs> I'm going to play on Voyager just because, you know, I want to enjoy it. <laughs> and I want you to enjoy it. Uh, what I don't want to do is do a series and it literally just be me getting my ass handed to me um, for like... Well, basically, constantly. So what we're going to decide on now is which region we want to start in. Because I normally... Oh, back. I mean, I quite like Coastal Highway. Mystery Lake might be fun just because it connects to Coastal Highway, so it might be good to, you know, do Mystery Lake and then head on to Coastal Highway. So we could give that a try, because Coastal Highway, I, I've played quite a lot, so it's quite, you know, easy. Well, I mean, I know this is actually even easier, but still. So I think we're going to go for Mystery Lake. And we are a gentleman, so uh, we will continue to be a gentleman. Not that it really matters in this game, but it doesn't at all. Um, so we will name this... Um, just campaign one. I don't know why I don't see the, the real point in the names. They don't seem to, uh, <laughs> to make any difference given that I'm never normally playing more than one at a time. Right. So how long can we survive is the question. Um, probably not very long. <laughs> I'm guessing. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Because what I'll probably do is play this game, for, uh, play it for a while. And if we get into a situation where it's, uh, you know, basically it's really easy, then I will uh, stop uh, probably for a little while and then maybe start a new campaign slightly further on. I'm going to turn the uh, volume down slightly. This sh wouldn't, shouldn't, wow, well, it might, might affect you because it's bloody deafening me. Maybe a little bit further. I should have really prepared this. I, I did turn it down. And then um, I started recording and then the wind started blowing on the main screen. And I was like, oh, God, I can't see, can't hear a damn thing. 
Right, so where are we? I've got a feeling we are over. God, that's still too loud. Turn this all the way down. All the way down. What about 15? I've got headphones on doing this. Um, which is probably why. There we go, that's better. Probably why it's really, really loud. I can actually hear something that's not wind. Um, I think we are over by... It's on Mystery Lake. There's a train track which runs through the middle. Um, and I think we are possibly north of that. So what we got to do is keep an eye out for... Um, essentially any sort of landmarks which we can head towards. Um, I know north of that railroad is the... Um, I think it's called the Trapper's Hut. I mean, that's another thing with this game is there is no in-game map at all that I... Well, I mean, unless one has been added more recently, I'm almost certain there isn't. There isn't. That isn't the case, though. But there is no in-game map whatsoever. So you just have to navigate on your own means, by your own means. So, like, people produce what are essentially... Wow, they produce different types of maps. So, like, what in the Steam guides, you'll find um, numerous maps for different things. So, like, spoiler-free maps where it won't show any of, like, certain things. Or you'll, it'll only show resources and so on and so forth. What's that? That looks like a piece of birch bark. Birch bark. Lovely. Um, we'll pick some sticks up as we go. I'm pretty sure... Like, I haven't played this probably in about three months. It's quite cool to note that when you, um, like, look over an item, it shows what their uses are. So this one, this one could be used for, um, fire and crafting. Is the HUD actually on? Uh, heads up display. Mm -hmm. HUD's, HUD's on. I swear there was more stuff on the heads-up display. I might just be imagining things, though. Oh, actually, no, there isn't. What am I on about? No, this is all fine. You can tell it's a long time since I've played this game. Um, so given that we're going down, I'm thinking... I think I know where we are. The only other place we could potentially be... Oh dear, I'm 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 so cold. What's that? Oh. Whatever that is, I can't get it. The only other place I could think I am is there is an area just north of or next to the lake, which is where there's a bunch of uh, basically a bunch of clear cut area. Let's get this old man's beard. They it's used for um it's used for uh, bandages. Hopefully we, <laughs> hopefully we won't be in a situation where we actually need to use it. But you know, the aim of this, the the sort of whole thing, of this game is be prepared. Sort of, <laughs> I guess, assume the worst and hope for the best. <laughs> Which uh, normally, I mean, obviously, again, this is only on Voyager difficulty. But you know, it'll probably bite me in the ass and. I will uh, get killed. Here is a little hut. It doesn't look like one we can actually like go into, or as in it's not an actual indoors. But there might be some deadfall area. Now where is this? That rings a bell. Ah, hatchet. So that'll be really useful. So everything in this game has a cost. Like in terms of what you actually do. So, by that I mean, if I want to use a hatchet to break something down, it's much more efficient than my hands. Um, which seems obvious, but in a lot of games, that wouldn't be the case. Like, so you are punished, essentially, for using not as good items. Also, another thing that's probably worth pointing out from this game is that you can't jump, just in case any... Uh, wow, at least I don't think you can. Let's have a look. Key bindings. No, you can't jump. That's fine. So you can crouch, but you can't jump. So just in case I end up coming up to anything, 
that looks impassable and everyone's like, oh, why didn't you jump? What are you doing? That's why. Because you can't. Because <laughs> evidently, the survivor does not have knees. Ah, so yes, there's the end, I think, of the train track, which means I know exactly where I am, and it means I was right. I was slightly... well, I suppose it depends which way you're looking at the map, but from the way I remember looking at the map, slightly north of the train track. Yeah, so this is what I'm on about saying there is a cost. I can use nothing, I can use my hands to break it down, it takes 10 minutes, burns 50 calories. If I use a hatchet, it uses half the time. Still same yield, it's just more time and more resources, or more calories, which I guess is a resource, uh, that it actually takes you to, to break down. So, we're going to go over hither, and um, loot the area around here, because as I recall, there's normally a body, or there has the potential to be a body. Um, of some poor, wow, well, some unlucky, un wow, well, I was going to say unlucky survivor, but he's not really a survivor if he's dead. Um, so I'm going to go and have a look around here, if I can find anything. There was a random pop-up my TV just said, saying it was trying to turn off in four hours, which is a bit annoying. Uh, turn off because it's been on for more than four hours. Hopefully that didn't appear in the recording. Right, so we've got a bit of cedar firewood. That's good. We can use use that. So I thought the body is normally in here. But that does not appear to be the case. Rye bar is very good. Metal container. Player, wool scarf. Lovely. Um Oh, there's the heads up display. So how do we get into our... Uh, ah, backpack is I. Okay, I'm going to set that to... What am I going to set that to? That to set that to keypad 5. Alright, let's get out of the wind. Um, is there anything... I'm going to equip... Uh, actually, I'm not going to equip that just yet. Hmm. How do I unequip stuff? What's the uh, key bindings for that? Holster. H. There we go. Right, so there doesn't appear to be anything around here. Or at least not as much as I thought there would be. I mean, we still got a pry bar, which is pretty damn good. And um, a flare, and... I mean, granted, we already actually had the scarf. But, hey-ho. There is... So we're going to hug here, because that should... Um, reduce our exposure to wind, I think. I think... Yeah, so you can see the little um, icon in the bottom left, which is showing that we are, uh, we've been we're protected from the wind. So that should basically help us out a little bit with regards to losing temperature, feeling winded. Well, no, winded is from um, running, stuff like that. So there is what I get. Well, there are two main sort of houses. I, well, not houses. Places which most people normally use as bases. Or at least at the start. In that direction, there is the Trapper's Homestead, which is like up at the top of a hill. And is quite a nice little place, to be honest. The only thing I believe it mi is missing, which is pretty useful, is a crafting area. Um, and then you have the, I think it's the, is it the Ranger's Station or something like that? Which is just coming up on our left here. Which is what we're going to stay in initially. Um, which is actually okay. It's in quite a good central location. That looks like a body. Is that a body? Just got to keep an eye out for wolves. Because I know there are some wolves that normally um, creep up around here. And I would rather not get killed. 
at this point, or not have to run for my life. It is a body. Frozen corpse. Let's have a look. What do we get? Hope nobody needs this anymore. Rifle cartridge. You're telling me on his whole corpse, the only thing he had to his name was a rifle cartridge. No wonder he died. How do you expect to live when all you've got is a rifle cartridge? I think another one of the reasons I perhaps don't survive that long, because some people are really good at, like, using decoys and stuff like that to distract wolves. I'm not so good at that. In that... Is that a corpse? A deer corpse? I'm not so good at that in that I quite... I would quite often just shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> which is not a particularly smart thing to do because you might need those bullets for bears. I'm fairly certain that is a rock. So we're going to go... Yeah, so this is the little house we're going to we're going to, um, which works out quite nicely, really, because the episode will be ending in a few minutes. So I will go in here and pop some of my stuff in certain places. And then next episode, we'll go out and explore the lake. That's the only, uh, with regards to recording Long Dark, the slightly annoying thing, is that you can't just, like, stop and save it wherever you want. Like, if you want to say, you literally, you literally have to quit the game, and it just reloads at your last save. So, right, what is this called? Maybe it said, and I didn't notice. Right, so we should... Camp office. There we go, not ranger's office. Yeah, there's loads of bits and pieces in here. There's Nobody a summit soda. What else have we got? Antiseptic. That'll come in handy if we ever get collared by a wolf. Radio's not working, probably unsurprisingly. I'm intrigued as to what else they've actually added. Of let or if there's been anything else added since I last played. I have to admit, I haven't kept up to date on the patch notes. So we've just got a wool woolly hat. Let's go to our clothes. Okay, so that woolly hat is... Yeah, there's pretty much no difference between our existing... Oh, we're getting well unlucky. Three un un empty ones in a row. There is an energy bar, tin of sardines, tomato soup, and condensed milk. That's really good. Yes, yeah, so la last time I played this, I literally had so much stuff, like food. I was just sat there for ages eating condensed milk for like weeks on end. Storm lantern is very good. I'm going to press H and holster that because I don't want to use that at the moment. Because it's plenty light enough in here. There is, luckily, some reclaimed wood, some newsprint, that'll be good for fires, and there should also be fishing hook. Wheat, a wet, I'm not sure whether it's called a wheat stone or a wet stone, I think it's a wet stone. Um, but that'll be used for sharpening tools. Lamp fuel. Lantern fuel, some cloth. Is there anything down there? No. First aid kit. I really should have recorded this when there wasn't something shining on the screen, because it uh, makes it quite hard to see when it's in dark areas. Water purification tablets that'll help us out if we were sort of a bit stuck. Um, we get stuck outside and we need some water. I could use this. Accelerant. If we need to start fires in an emergency. And more lantern fuel. Nothing else on these bottom shelves, is there? What about in this set of shelves? Wilderness Kitchen. See, I've never seen a book before. So it improves cooking skill by 10 points. So I'm going to take that. So what? Presumably, we researched that. See, st new stuff must have been added, or I clearly didn't pay much attention in my last playthrough. So it looks like we research that and then it cooks faster i don't know this is the only another uh, other thing i dislike about this place is there's a corpse just casually sat in here hope i can still eat this lovely some matches nothing on those shelves ragged thin wool sweater is quite damaged though i'm not sure how useful that'll be to us 
A bit pants so far. There's like next to nothing actually in here. So there's nothing on top. No. What do the metal pans do? I presumably they must be. Can you use them for cooking? I don't know. A book. This will come in handy. Uh, crates we can break down because there's no real other use for them. Bedroll. Moldy granola bar. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I've never seen a moldy granola bar before, so that must be something that's new as well. Um, I think that's everything in here. I swear, I've normally been here and there's been a lot nicer things. Oh well. Well, we've got this. We've got, you know, we're in relative safety. We're warming up somewhat. We'll uh, get an episode, a uh, fire going in the next episode. Um, just to, to warm ourselves. And do we have any... We've got some soda. We might as well drink. Drink that now. Lovely. And moldy granola bar. See, it's moldy, so presumably that's just sh basically shouting at us that it is likely that it's going to um, give us food poisoning. Let's eat the tin of sardines. I think we're okay for the moment. Just need to warm up. So we will do that in the next episode. Uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and I will speak to you in the next one. Take care.